This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, football fans, and welcome to The Onside Kick. My name is Ricky Widmer, and as always, I'm joined by the Mark Weber. Dub them E's. And Mark, today's a special day. It is. Because Very special. Because not only are we continuing the mock draft kind of hype train up until the NFL draft next Thursday, this is not Mel Kuyper's mock draft. Nope. It's not NFL.com's mock draft. Nope. This is the, not the MVP, the onside kick mock draft. Yeah. 2.0. Exactly. We, we did our 2.0. 1.0. Uh, you can go check that out. But why check that out when you can check out the new one? No, and with the new one. Updated. This is, these are the ground rules for today. We got to lay these out. Last time we said, okay, straight through picks 1 to 32. This time we're going to have one key change. Mm-hmm. Trades are on the board. Exactly. And we have a few of them today. Let's get to the first we one. We have at least 20. <laughs> There's a lot of There's them. 20 trades. Let's get to the first one, though. Because Another first, well, let's go through the first couple well, picks. First. I mean, number one, we've got, here's the top five that we got rolling out. We've got Tampa Bay going with Jameis Winston. Of course. We've got not the Titans picking Mariota at number two. We'll get to that. Then we have the Jaguars going Leonard Williams, the Raiders going Amari Cooper, and rounding out the top five, we have the Redskins going Dante Fowler Jr. But let's get to that second pick because that's the meaty pick because everyone's sitting there going, whoa, Ricky, you dropped a bomb and you said not the Titans. Who's making that pick? It's the San Diego Chargers. The goal charges go. They, you know, in in the uh, the city of San Diego, the fans are upset. They're not happy about this pick, and I'll tell you why. They might like who they uh, who they did pick. Stay classy, San Diego. But they are not happy about the fact that they gave up. The, and remember, yeah, go, let's all remember the uh, Washington Redskins Rams the RG3 trade. trade. This was a harder trade to make because okay. the Chargers were further back in the draft. Before we get into this. Mm-hmm. Go through what the yep. Chargers and Titans would have to trade back and forth. The Chargers are giving up this year's 17, number 17 the overall, 17th overall of the pick. first round. Next year's first round pick. Okay. The following first round pick. So, so three, three first, first round rounds. picks, very similar to the Rams. So 2015, 2016, 2017. Exactly. Okay. They also are giving up this year's third round pick. Which is a little different as opposed to the Rams gave up a second. Yeah. So they're going a little over. The reason why they're able to do that. Because they're giving Phillip Rivers. Yes, they're yeah. trading Phillip Rivers to the How, Tennessee Titans. And you did this with whatever. What website did you use for all just, these values? Well, I got it on uh, WalterFootball.com. But just okay. Google search the trade val- NFL draft trade value chart. And it's always the same chart. Because I'm wondering if mm-hmm. the Chargers. Because none of these drafts and these values are 100%. There are some ways some teams are really good negotiators. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the Chargers can say, can finagle it to her, hey, we're giving you three first-round picks and Phillip Rivers. Can we make that third a fourth? Does it really need to be a third? I think, I mean, sure, they can try, but... That's the only thing I think finagling goes on. To be fair, though, with this, we also had the discussion of what is Phillip Rivers worth. Is mm-hmm. he worth a second? Is he worth a third? In this, I say a third. In this, I credit him as being worth a second. Really? I Why? gave him a little bit of extra, honestly, because they were going to have to give up so much for this to work. So I gave them the benefit of the doubt. See, and I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not putting Philip Rivers all the way up with a second because it's all about where Philip Rivers is right now. He's 33. Yep. He ain't getting any younger. No. So the Titans by. Getting Phillip Rivers, mm-hmm. could this also be a move of San Diego? The Chargers want to move to LA, and someone's not and willing someone to doesn't move want with to, them. Someone's so not willing to move that he's willing to Carson Palmer them. Yeah, and just say eh, whatever. I retire. Yeah, now nah, I'll just hang it up. And remember too, I've said this in past podcasts, but Jay Cutler was being credited as probably a fourth. So I that puts in my mind Philip uh, Philip Rivers as probably a third. Uh, yeah, I could see. A I third. gave him the second in this one, honestly, just because it made things a little smoother. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably not what it would actually be, but like you said, on draft day, you know when that clock is ticking down, the Titans might really want to make a pick or make yeah. a trade, and they might be going, you know what, fine, that's good enough. 
we're okay. However, I, in me, the only reason why I think this trade goes through is I think the Chargers pursue it. Because, like we said, the him saying, hey, you know, you moved to L.A., I'm done. Mm-hmm. To me, that's a, that's a guy where it's like, do you want to be here? Like, well, he wants to be here. He wants to be in San Diego. He doesn't want to be in L.A. You're either with the front office or you're Mm -hmm. against the front office. And usually when you're against the front office, you're going to find the door. That's the way I see it. And the Titans, they're looking at it as we can either take the Titans would be fine picking Mariota at number two. They get a quarterback. Because I don't think that they're. I I wouldn't say they'd be fine. Well, I don't think they're satisfied Mm -hmm. with that. I don't think that they're. Totally with yeah. Zach Mettenberger. No, no. But they're smitten if this trade goes through because not only do you get Philip Rivers for about, Probably. I would say, three years at the if most. You're, if you're lucky. I mean, you're really hoping Maybe that Mettenberger or someone else you might draft yeah. later on. Four, four years comes if he's up. Uh, Tom Brady, no, Kate Manning. No way. Yeah, you're hoping <laughs> that, that that backup quarterback becomes the starter yeah. within two years in and this situation. But your the main part is not only are you getting Philip Rivers that can last you two to three, you're getting extra for. Oh, you're getting picks. so much out of it. Yeah, so they they make and the trade in a heartbeat. If you're lucky, like the Rams mm-hmm. were, and this quarterback trade, like the quarterback that's drafted doesn't work out yep. very well, you're gonna get some good picks out of it. So you'll be you'll be really thrilled about those next two first round picks. I will say this uh, involving this trade as well. Uh, not that I think. Mariota is the best thing. I think Mike McCoy is, is he gonna... the best thing since sliced bread. Not is quite. He? I think Mike <laughs> McCoy. I feel really bad for Mike McCoy in this situation. I re- I really would because maybe Marcus Mariota is going to be great, mm-hmm. but the odds are a rookie quarterback's not going to look too good. And with a team maybe moving to L.A., that head coach is thinking, I got to think about the future. Where's my next job going to be? Mm-hmm. Because they're probably going to be getting booted, especially if the team moves. You got rid of the old quarterback. You got this new one who's n- not the best situation for you, maybe. It's going to be interesting. Here's the thing, and moving on a little bit, here's something we talked about. And we decided, like I said, Leonard Williams gets picked by the Jags at three, and then Amari Cooper to the Raiders at four. But... And Mark, I brought this up to you, and we yeah. eventually, after talking about it, went the way we did. What are the odds of the Raiders maybe trying to pull something a la Vikings Browns when the Matt Khalil deal mm-hmm. for Trent Richardson, where the Browns go, you know what, we we would be like happy with a wide receiver, but we really want a defensive end. And Leonard Williams is a really nice defensive end. Pick up that phone and go, ring, ring, hey, Jacksonville, what do you want? Yeah. For that one, just to move up to get Williams. Because, like, looking at the Raiders' need, technically on NFL.com, wide receivers, mm-hmm. their number one need. But we're talking about... You don't pass up on We're this talking guy. about Raider Nation, who yeah. they build themselves on being one of the tough... I'm talking old Raiders. Build themselves on being a tough team. That's a tough fan base. And how do you do that? You get tough defenses in there. You mm-hmm. get a guy. You already got Khalil Mack, linebacker last year. You're probably you. You're not gonna take an offensive or a outside linebacker mm-hmm. with Dante Fowler. You'll take wide receiver over that. But that defensive line, yeah, you'll you'll want that in five years when everybody loves doing those redraft. Mm-hmm. Williams is number one, or the, he's gonna be the guy that the Bucks should have taken, or the Chad Ford. Let me just. Redo my mock draft. Oh yeah, I had Damian Lillard going yeah, in the first round. Exactly. No, you didn't. Now I. This one's interesting because the Browns with those two first round mm-hmm. picks can get up into the top five. But uh, see, I just don't think it's really that worth it. I think they have so many needs that they're going to be best served using both those first round picks. I believed it when Mariota was a slide, mm-hmm. like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when we thought Mariota to the Jets at six. I thought, okay, Browns can trade the Redskins, take Mariota five. And we had him actually go at five in our first round. Mariota, yeah. Mariota went to the Redskins. We let him go to the Redskins, and that was without trade. Mm -hmm. But now that he's up to two, Browns aren't trading anywhere. The next few picks that we have, like I said, Dante Fowler went number five to the Redskins. We had the Jets go at Vic Beasley. 
Mark your bears. Everyone says wide receiver this, wide receiver that. It keeps that. happening. I don't get it. Danny Shelton. Yeah, well, we've that, been sticking firm. You get that nose tackle. You lock it down, Chicago. Mm. Shane Ray with um, the Falcons. And then number nine, we have uh, Sheriff, yep. a offensive tackle for the Giants. And probably the most interesting that you'll see in our top ten between five and ten, Kevin White falling to number ten, the Rams. I think this is good for the Rams. The Rams are going to be thrilled with this. They need something to help out mm-hmm. this offense, especially now that you got this great quarterback. Well, this quarterback you're expecting to be great. You got the next Nick Peyton Foles. Manning. Yes. Well, some would say as good as Peyton Manning. Uh, so you got he did Peyton tie Manning the same record, did he? Did. Yeah, Peyton Manning light out there, so you're feeling pretty good. Now you go get that weapon, and I think uh, that White, being the speedster that he is, this is a good way to go because you can just open up that top. He's got a little bit more reach to him as well. He's a little taller. I think this is going to be fantastic, and the if you're a Rams fan, mm-hmm. things are looking good for you right now. Well, and I'm also thinking about even before that, and you may be thinking, well, Ricky, here's the thing I want to throw in there. Mm-hmm. We had White going 10. The latest NFL mock draft had the Giants taking, not just like, oh, White went that far. No, the first wide receiver, Amari Cooper, dropped to number nine in that mock draft. I looked at that and went, what? Especially because all these mock drafts coming up to this point have been wide so receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver heavy. Look at yeah. Mel Kuypers. He had like an abundance of wide mm-hmm. receivers. I think if you look through ours, I haven't counted it through today's. We have a good amount, but... There is a good amount of wide mm-hmm. receivers going, but here's the interesting thing. Number 11, my Vikings. Mm-hmm. You should be asking me this question, but I'll answer it after you. Okay. Odds AP gets trade before or during draft night. I think they're asking too much. I think you the really Vikings think are asking, asking too much. Too much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Adrian Peterson's solid talent and everything like that, and he's obviously the best running back in mm-hmm. the league. Uh, I'm even willing to assume that coming back after being reinstated, he'll be the best in the league next year. But I don't want to give up my first round pick, and I have to have a starting corner to give you too. No, too much. I'm sorry, here's it's not going to happen. Here's why I think the asking price is dead on, because the Vikings, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. if no team takes that offer. Cool, we got AP. Oh, yeah, for the Vikings, they don't care. AP is not, and I love how everyone, I've heard some people say, oh, well, AP should just sit out. AP already missed a year of football. Mm -hmm. He's not going to do that. He's the type of guy who we've heard, I want to break records. I want to chase Emmett Smith. I want to be the best running back all time. Mm -hmm. You can't do that if you take two years off. No, no, especially especially two years back to back. That's well, gonna be two you're gonna year, be out of shape. Two years back to back, and I want to say with the ACL one, wouldn't that be three and four years? Yeah, right. Yeah, because he had ACL, then the record breaking season last season, and then if he sat out this season, exactly, all because he didn't want to play in Minnesota. I mean, or as the Vikings are sitting there, mm. they have all the leverage at the table. Oh yeah, we can sit there and go. This is what we want. Take it or leave it. If you don't take it, we got AP. Exactly. And I think part of it is that the Vikings don't want to lose AP either. They're just yep. saying, hey, if we can get a King's Ransom out of this, fantastic. Give us everything you're willing to give. However, here's the thing. Cow- I'm, I'm jumping ahead here. Mm-hmm. If the Cowboys don't get their running back, and we're going to get to this later, if they don't get their running back, do they think about that later in the draft? Maybe day two draft, like maybe day two draft trade where they go, hey, we didn't get our running back. We have a corner that we can give them. We can give them a first rounder next year. Let's get AP. Let's bring them to Dallas. I don't know. They might think about it. Uh, that's that's an interesting move, um, especially because if they don't get somebody to replace DeMarco Murray, that's a huge loss, and that offense is nowhere near the same as they were last year. Because the run game is all that took that running or that took that offense where they did. I think the Vikings. If you're the Vikings, if you're gonna trade AP, you want to do it before mm-hmm. the eleventh overall pick. Because, like I told you, two thing. One of two things are gonna happen. The number eleventh pick rolls around. If AP is still on the roster and we haven't traded him, Trey Wayne's. And that's who sure. we got going to the Vikings is Trey Waynes. 
if AP is not on the roster, we got that starting corner, we got that first rounder. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have to go Trey Waynes. We can go Devonta Parker and give Teddy someone to throw to. For sure. Or Kevin White, if you're some of the mock drafts who have. I mean, I think it's even falling. it's even possible to go with the Cowboys and kind of play mm-hmm. off of that even more to talk about when the Cowboys next or when the when their first round pick comes up. Let's say that running back is not there, and the Cowboys are going. Hey, the Vikings we can still him. get a wide receiver with that. With, oh yeah, even if the Cowboys gave them what pick did the Cowboys have? Twenty seven. Even at twenty seven, they can get a wide receiver. Yeah, Vikings definitely can get one, and it'll be a good. It'll be mm-hmm. a good wide receiver, not one of the best, but it'll be a good wide receiver. And I think in this scenario here, yeah, you probably already took the corner, but now you just have two. I don't think having depth is going to be a problem in this situation. I mean, you're not going to be upset that you have too many cornerbacks when you're going against Aaron Rodgers, Jay Cutler, who loves to throw it, Megatron. You need, you know, you need to have that secondary be strong and. I maybe this is because I'm high on him because um, I got to see him a mm-hmm. lot being an Illinois fan watching Big Ten football. But if I'm the Vikings, and this is if Cowboys say, "Hey, you know what? We didn't get our guy. Have this first rounder. Have a starting corner. Give us AP. We take our wide receiver in the second in the end of the first round." And people go, okay, what are we going to do a running back? Do we have the answer? In the second round, maybe a little early for him, mm-hmm. you could draft a guy like Amir Abdul. Yeah. Or Abdullah, I'm sorry. Amir Abdullah. And you, uh, you, Nebraska you, running back. You say it's maybe a little bit early, but if it works out and you have yeah. the need, it's not necessarily a bad I, thing. I like Amir. I think he's a great runner. I think if Melvin Gordon didn't do what he did, mm-hmm. Amir's the guy we're talking about yeah. out of the Big Ten, the guy to be battling Gruley. But because and, Melvin mm-hmm. Gordon was Melvin Gordon, and I don't that's think a lot of your fans, him. a lot of the Viking fans out there, are going to be thrilled about this because they're going to see no. it as, oh, you were trying to replace AP with this rookie. Yeah. What are you doing? But I think in the long in the long run, I think it's that's going to be a good thing. Because I mean, hey, running Zimmer, backs don't have forever. Yeah, because Zimmer's a defensive minded guy. So if you can get him a starting corner out of it, mm-hmm. and you get Trey Waynes. Yeah. Trey Waynes and a, and a starter out of that deal, I would take it. But after the 11th pick, we've got 12 Devontae Parker actually yep. going to the Browns, which is a great move because they need a wide receiver. They've needed a wide receiver for a while. Right now, I mean, Josh Gordon came back, was a dud. Mm-hmm. Johnny Manziel needs someone to throw to because right now he's Cor- the quarterback. quarterback X there, needs somebody to throw there to. There is Luke McCown. One yeah. of them needs somebody to throw to. Yeah, someone needs to throw the ball to somebody. Jordan There's Cam- nothing there. Jordan Cameron didn't pan out either. He's gone. Yeah. He's gone. So it's, I don't know, the Browns are a mess when it comes to the offense. And I, I think in our draft, it seems like for us, we really wanted to address that unloved mm-hmm. offense. And the first way to do it was to get a wide receiver. Yeah. And the next pick, 13, I'm throwing this in there because this is a guy that we kind of decided, is he going to fall further? Mm -hmm. Is he going to go before this? Randy Gregory. Yep. Saints putting a stop to the fall. And I think think that's about accurate. Because we we talked, do the Giants take him? They could. We had that discussion. Do they? Because I asked you, I believe it was the Giants pick. I said, Mm -hmm. you're in the war room. Do you take outside linebacker, a pass rush? Mm-hmm. Or do you protect Eli? And you said, I, I want to protect, protect Eli. Eli. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, we don't have that much left out of Eli mm-hmm. Manning, probably. Uh, and we're going to have a young quarterback somewhat soon. I yep. want to have a solid offensive line that makes the end of Eli's career better. Mm-hmm. I don't want it ending early. And whenever we do get that next guy in here, I want him to walk into a great situation. You already got a good uh, young running uh, wide receiver. We don't need another one of those, although we could use one. Uh but get that offensive line builder. Just build up all of this so that way this offense is back to working the way it should when they were, you know, winning two Super Bowls. Here's the only thing that, like, with the Saints, their top two needs. that Those are going to be the only two positions they think about at 13. Mm-hmm. Do we go? And it's the same decision that the Giants had to make. Now I'm going to make this one. Mm-hmm. And you either go... Outside linebacker, which everyone that we have, and you can see down in the description, either if you're listening on SoundCloud, YouTube, if you're on WXAV, you can go to our 
Twitter at Most yeah. Valuable Pod or Facebook page, uh, facebook.com backslash Most Valuable Podcast to uh, just see mm-hmm. the, like, the actual picks. The, the picks in the description. Yeah. But do you go outside linebacker with Gregory or do you protect your old 36 year old quarterback, Drew Brees? And at the time, mm-hmm. I mean, yes, we have um, Brandon Sheriff off the board. Andrus Pete is still there. DJ Humphreys is still there. Lael Collins, Superman Collins. That's yep. what we're going to hashtag. Superman, Superman Collins. Collins is what we're starting on the podcast. What do you go with? For me, mm-hmm. I go. We want a defense. Randy Gregory, I buckle agree. up. You're a saint. I agree completely. You have to, and because the Saints are, and it's just better value too for that thirteenth pick. This is going to sound like people are going to say Ricky. That was Bounty Gate, but. The Saints were a good team when their defense buckled mm-hmm. down. I mean, even if they're not kept taking tough. bounties, that defense yeah. was tough. No, the defense was t- a little bit too tough. Let's get that yeah. out there. For sure. But if you have a tough defense, yeah. you're going to be hard to beat. Ricky's a Vikings fan, too. So I am you know, a Vikings He wants to put that out there. He wants to put that out there <laughs> oh, in big red letters. That game. We should have went to the Super Bowl, Mark. No, you should We could have beaten Peyton Manning. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't doubt. We could have beat Brett, Brett Favre, Favre versus Peyton, Peyton Manning. Manning. Brett Favre was having a great season that year. Until, you know, he you're, threw you're, an interception. You're telling me that Brett Favre was not having a great season that year? He was, but then he threw an interception. That was that was his, I win it now or never. And it was never. It was never. It was never. But then at, Ask Corey Wooten when that would be. At 14. Answer never. <laughs> you got to throw the Wooten at me. At 14, we got the Dolphins going. They gave up Mike Wallace. We said, hey. Take uh, Perryman out of Central That's right. Florida. The Tannehills need to throw to somebody. Receiver. Then they got to keep have, that job because pretty. This is pretty much make or break yeah. for the Tannehills. At fifteen, we have the 49ers going defensive tackle, defensive end. However, you see him, Eric Armstead, Oregon guy. The Texans. Chip Kelly's a little upset. The, All his Oregon guys are <laughs> off the board. The Texans are an interesting pick, and this is one that we stopped at. Because we have the Texans. I'm just going to get the suspense out of the way. We've got them going Doriel Green, Beckham. Mm -hmm. However, there's a guy on the board who is a outside linebacker. Their number three need, Bud Dupree, who everyone's high on. Everyone thinks he's going to go high. Yeah, he's been climbing so much. However, the Texans' number one need is a wide receiver, and me and you kind of combined it, mm-hmm. our thoughts. My first thought was I came in strong. I was like, you know what? You go your number one need, plus Bill O'Brien's an offensive guy. Yeah. He's going to go offense. Then you brought in your spin. What do you like about Green Beckham or Green Beckham? He is Beckham. Beckham. He is I a thought bi- I said He's a right. big man, and he's who's he replacing? A big man. Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson. Yeah. So you got to replace him, and I'm not saying like he's going to be a direct replacement. No, but, but I mean you, you got to start somewhere. You need someone for quarterback X, yeah, whoever it may be, to throw to. Exactly, and when in this situation when you got that amazing defense out there, you don't need to add yet another piece to it. It's <laughs> well, fine, and that's a thing we talked about. And you even said it. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, part of me wants oh, yeah. to make that defense better. If you can just get Cushing, that defense even scarier, Clowney, it's insane. Will Fork. Watt, and then, and this is the only, I'm going to throw devil's advocate because we talked about this. Yeah. The Texans would be a great fit for Bud Dupree because the mm-hmm. biggest, the biggest downside that I've heard experts say about Dupree is that, yeah, he's a good pass rusher, but he needs to develop. He needs to develop his mind mostly because when people categorize him, it kind of sounds like, a dog that you just let run loose. Yeah. Who doesn't sure. know where he's going? It's kind of like the Joker in Batman when he talks about uh if he's chasing I'm a car. Chasing car I'm chasing a truck. I don't know why I'm chasing. I'm just chasing. He doesn't know what he'll do if he ever gets it. He needs to develop. Yeah. When you got a defense like Watt, Cushing, Clowney, Will Fork, you mm-hmm. can just he can just kind of be there. I mean, you can try in this situation for me it's like you can try and just let the rich keep getting richer. But I think Bill O'Brien's going to sit there and go, "Okay, Enough is enough. Our defense isn't going to win us games. They're just going to put us in the position to win games. Now I need somebody who's going to go win that game. The only, and that's my wide receiver. The only reason 
the 2000, I want to say, was it 2007 Bears? 2000, no, that was 2006. 2006, well, it was the 2007 Super Bowl. Yeah. The only reason that Bears team Mm -hmm. didn't need a great offense is because they they had defense put points on the board. Yeah. Unless you have a team, a defense that's going to put points on the board. But even then, you know, you can only do so much. Yeah, but you're not going to win games if you don't put points on the board yourself. That's what's going to buckle down to. That's why they're going to go with Green Beckham. Whereas next, after that, we have the second part to our Charger-Titan trade. Mm -hmm. I'll let you take this one away. What are the Titans doing? Well, the Titans are going to go with uh, Jalen Collins for this one. Which, I mean, I think... Obviously, it's a good pick. They had a lot of options when it comes to uh, that that number two pick, but trading out of it to go for Jalen Collins, much better situation here well, because you have all those picks for later, but also this is a high need at a good value. Well, and it this trade works out perfectly for the Titans because, like you said, you get all those first-rounders, but more importantly, you go from drafting a guy who would be your fifth need Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mariota's a good quarterback. He's a good prospect. He's got high upside in the NFL because I think he does just because of how smart he is. But you're going from fifth need to number one need. Exactly. And you get how many first round picks you're gonna in get, our well, trade? You just used one of them, but you got two more. Yeah. You get two more next year, one more this year. That's well, how it works. You got yeah, you got the one this year, one yeah. next year, one the following. No, I'm talking about you get you already used one. Yep. You have two more first rounders waiting, and you yeah. get a third rounder to use this year. Yep. You get an extra third rounder. That's what I was referencing. Mm-hmm. You get one more this year. Plus, you get a cornerback that NFL.com has as their second rated corner, mm-hmm. right behind Trade Waynes, who my Vikings drafted. Yeah. And it's, ooh. Of course, with Leonard Williams there, that would have been a great, solid option at that number two. But you just got too much. You got too much. If you're willing to get, if you're able to get some team, to make that Redskins Ram style trade yep. for you, and you got Philip Rivers out of it for a few years, you just you got to pull that trigger. Mark, you got to talk me through one more because yep. I'm a little confused right here. Now this we, one's interesting. We've got a hold trade up. coming up at 18. Exactly, we have a trade. Take and me this through this trade. It. Take there's, me there's through a certain it, team. When you look at this here, this is when we're getting into the uh, land of running backs. Are mm-hmm. The Rams mm-hmm. want one. You got a little bit of room, but the the Cardinals want one. The uh, the the, the, Browns. the Panthers might want did one. Did you mention the Browns? I did. Okay. The, the Cowboys are the last one that probably want one. So you got like four teams here who probably want Did you say Ravens? Somebody. Oh, of course the Ravens. Ravens Can't forget could about the Ravens. for a replacement to Ray Rice. So you're sitting here. You're one of those teams back there, and you're thinking, I want to get above the Browns because I want my pick. I want one of these guys I know. I got to make a trade with the Chiefs. So you're calling up the Chiefs. You're the Arizona Cardinals, and you're giving them your 24th overall pick. You're giving them next year's third round pick and this year's fourth. And you are going to go out, and you know who you're going to get? Ricky, you're going to get Kirk. Todd Gurley. That's who you're going to get. Well, and it's the big thing of— Actually, what, my mistake. Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon. And I was going to say, this is the big thing of what you want or— as and there's a specific reason why you want Melvin Gordon. I as Todd Gurley, a lot of people are comparing him to Marshawn Lynch. I cannot remember who, but when we've done some mm-hmm. Twitch streaming on our YouTube channel, and when we were talking about this in one of our streams, mm-hmm. someone in like the chat section said, I wouldn't compare him to Marshawn Lynch. They threw a name out there, couldn't remember who it was, yeah. because I'm saying... How do you not compare him to Marshawn? Mm. However, to me, the whole injury ACL thing. It is scary. It is scary. It's a little scary. And Melvin Gordon is a sure, I'm going to say a sure thing. I'm going to say it. Boom, I said it. And when you're trading, you know, once again, your first round, your fourth round, next year's third round, you can't go there and get the guy who might have something and has a little bit of a question mark. You got to get the guy who's a guarantee. Say those trade details one more time. This year's first round. Nice and slow. Next year's fourth round, or I'm sorry, this year's first, this year's fourth, next year's third. That's who the Cardinals gave up, just yes. for Melvin Gordon. Yep, which isn't that bad. It's not terrible. It's no uh, Chargers Titans pick. Well, you're not trading up to the second overall. <laughs> it could it's a be lot, worse. It's a lot, a lot easier once you get past 15. And this is a thing of 
with Arizona of if they do this, mm-hmm. great, they got a running back. However, they are a team that people are talking maybe trade for AP. Which is possible. They, they got, they've got some wealth They've got on that some defense. nice corners that they yeah. can give up. Will they give it up? But in this, not. in this situation, I'm saying, you know what? Forget it. I'm taking the young guy. Yep, and I would too. Now, we're gonna now move. is when a little Todd Gurley comes yeah. up. And yeah, and the Browns, this is what we talked about. We sat here and we were like, well, what do the Browns do? And this is my kind of, I'm going to take the next two picks. All right. My mindset for the Browns at 19 is, okay, the card I wasn't expecting that. Cardinals jumped ahead of us to get a running back. Mm-hmm. Screw it. We got it. We need a running back. We got to have someone that we can have quarterback X hand the ball off to. Todd Gurley, best available. That's yeah. how it's going to work. It's oh, going to be. It is going to be a very Browns pick, less Brownsy than the Richardson trade. Oh, for sure. But I think in this case. Uh, you got to think about that offense and how bad mm-hmm. it was. You, you still have some questions about, you know, a quarterback X here, but you got a wide receiver who's great. Yep. And you got a great running so back. So for the Browns, you just fir- answered two your questions. Your first round grade is an A. You got Devonta Parker and Todd Gurley. Mm-hmm. And in- now instantly improved your And offense. now you sit there saying, even if we're stuck with Luke McCown, or Josh McCown, I'm sorry. Even if we're stuck with Josh I McCown. I said Luke earlier. That's what threw uh, off. We're still able to put him in there and have even him if succeed you have, even because if you we have, have two uh, great weapons. Even if you have Johnny Football starting. Sure. Doesn't matter who starts. You got the weapons around them to where they're going to have to, they're not going to have much asked of them. And let's put it this way. I know everyone wants to already crown him, but if you take uh, Marshawn Lynch away from Russell Wilson, he's not as good as he is. Just nope. saying. Oh, definitely not. Just definitely saying. Not. So Todd Gruley may be able to help a guy, Johnny Football, who not the same player as Russell Wilson, but similar. He He's runs a mobile around. guy. He's yeah. a mobile guy. But the next pick, 20th. The Eagles are going here. You know what? We wanted to trade up for Mariota. Would have loved to, but it wasn't in the cards. We got Tim Tebow now. Well, they're fine with Tim Tebow. They got it set. We're Tebowing. Yep. That's what we're doing. All we're they need to do is get games into overtime, and they will win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to go and say, hey, we need a safety. Mm-hmm. Let's take the best one off the board, Landon Collins. You know, I would love somebody to uh, go out there and, and fact check me on this, but I'm pretty sure that Tim Tebow was 100% in overtime games. Is pretty he? sure he is. Playoff game and Chicago Bears. I think well, those are his only well, two well, playoff games. Don't forget why the Bears lost that Marion the Barbarian. Yeah, he uh, was on the Chicago Bears, <laughs> unfortunately. All he had to do was run out of what? Was it no, not he needed to stay inbounds. Okay, he needed yeah. to stay inbounds. All he had to do he was not run out of bounds. Goes out of bounds. And not run out of bounds. Then once you give Tim Tebow the ball at the end of a game, that was when Lovey there's nothing was, that can happen. Was Lovey with yep. the Bears or was that a Trustman year? No, that's a Lovey year. That was a Love. Was that Lovey's last year? Uh, I believe so. Man, it's been a long time since Tim Tebow started a game. Yeah, it's been about four years, I think. Maybe three, but it's some somewhere close to that. I think it was 2012. Yeah, and that's, that's well. I love there was, was the, January 14th, 2012. There was a graphic out there that was uh, the five worst QBRs of quarterbacks <laughs> in the NFL. Three of them are on the Eagles over the last five mm-hmm. years. Three of them on the Eagles being, of course, uh, when you have Tim Tebow, you have Mark Sanchez, and then you have uh, that other guy. I'm forgetting about. There right was now. also right after that deal happened, Sam Bradford. There was a little meme I saw of a quote that Chip Kelly said, mm-hmm. where he basically criticized Tim Tebow for being a running back who could throw. Yeah, where he's like, "Yeah, I'm not going to take a guy like hey, that maybe for my he offense wants a running because back. I don't want a running back who can or throw. I want a quarterback who can run." Yeah. And that was his big criticism. I want Marcus Mariota is what I want. Yeah. I think a funny thing, too, uh, just to put this out there, with a while ago when Chip Kelly was saying he doesn't like stars, you know, he doesn't want guys to be bigger than the team, mm-hmm. then he goes out and he gets Tim Tebow. Yeah. Which, and now the media circus is going, get your ticket to Philly, get your ticket to Philly right now, he might take his shirt off again. <laughs> so, I, I think that's the opposite of what he wanted to go for, but whatever. So Okay, the Bengals pick, we had trouble with the Bengals sitting at yeah, 21. Yeah, the Bengals are in a weird spot. Because they really need a nose tackle. Nothing there. Not nothing there. They could go wide receiver, but the big thing is Marvin Jones and Muhammad Sanu they're good enough complimentary wise when you have AJ to Green. AJ Green. There. Yeah. So I mean you could go out and take a guy like Jalen Strong, take a guy like Devin Funches, 
Take a guy like I'm gonna let you say his name out of U USC. Oh gosh, well, uh, is it through this on me. Aguilar? Uh, Aguilar? Aguilar? Yeah, Aguilar. Aguilar. I had to look at it. In Nelson order to Aguilar, think about it. who's a great punt return. I just didn't want to. I wanted you to say it first, so I didn't have to try to butcher it. I don't think we did. No, I think, I think we're we right. did a good Aguilar. job. We we looked it up before the podcast, but I looked at it because I knew we were gonna mention him here, and I go. Oh, uh, I forgot what we... But In that yeah, moment. Aguilar. However, although the wide receiver's mm -hmm. number one need... There's I, somebody sitting on the board right now. I think at 21, the Bengals go, okay, we're looking through these wide receivers. Oh, Bud Dupree? He's here? Yeah, let's take him. Yeah, he's still sitting there. Kind of fell a little bit. Most people have it's him great going value. 16. We have him sliding out of the top mm. 20. Yeah, which I uh, this is great. If you're the if you're the uh, Bengals, you don't really need the linebacker position, but you're happy to have it right now. Well, it's it's a, a little fourth. Bit, yeah, it's it's a, it's a little need. bit of a it's depth still thing. A need, but this is going to be a great a guy to have on your defense right now. Yeah, and I say it, this is just a best available. I would almost say overall. Yeah, kind I agree of a with thing. That. And then at twenty two, this so is when you got the Steelers got coming the up. Steelers, they're just going to say cornerback. Let's yeah. just go for it. I mean, it's a need. It's their number one need. Just go with the best corner. That's Kevin Johnson, of course. And then the Lions come to town at yeah. 23. Yeah. The Lions, who they need some offensive line help. Uh, but on the other side of that uh, that line, they lost Fairly and Sue. And that's all your fans are thinking about right yeah, now. A lot of teams have them going like hashtag Superman Collins. Mm-hmm. And, um, but me and you sat down and you even said it, Mark, before we, when we were going through this mock draft, getting it ready for this podcast, you said, yeah, you added hello to nada, but you lost Sue. You lost fairly. That's in the mind of your yep. fans. That's all anybody's thinking you about. You got to try to get something to replace them. And that's why we're going with Malcolm Brown. Yep. That's the only, that's the only option line. here right now, I think. I mean, defensive tech, it is a number one need, too. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're reaching for that. It is a number one need. Defense is so important. However, protecting Matty Stafford is uh, important, too. Yep. Now, it, for 24 here, uh, if you guys do remember, the Cardinals traded up out of this uh, with the Chiefs. So the Chiefs are on the board right now. They're sitting there going, we need somebody to uh, to help protect Alex Smith. It's here. a number one need. Hashtag Superman Collins. Hashtag Superman Collins. Lael is up and now he's going to Kansas City. I like it. And I mean, this is a guy that could have gone 23 to the Lions, mm -hmm. but instead, um, the Chiefs aren't, the Chiefs the aren't Chiefs. upset about it. No, Chiefs They're aren't. Happy. They got to protect Alex Smith, man. Yep. So, well, they got him a weapon to throw to mm -hmm. who might, maybe, I don't know, yep. maybe we'll catch a touchdown pass. <laughs> uh, but now he's got time. You're talking about Jeremy go. Macklin. We're hoping he's going to catch a touchdown pass. Talking about Jay Mack. I mean, any wide receiver, any one mm -hmm. of you want to catch a touchdown pass, mm -hmm. feel free. No one's going to get upset. Then at 25, we've got this is the, the man. The man. His name the we myth, could not the say. The legend. And Nelson Aguilar. I have to throw something out here. This is more of a YouTube shout out. We had a comment last week, Mark. Okay. From uh, WB is what I'm going to call him. That's yep. his initials, WB. Uh, he said, hey, guys, can you please talk about my Panthers? Please talk about my Panthers. Well, WB, we're talking about your Panthers. We got you. Here is our mindset mm -hmm. for the Panthers pick. Do they need some left tackle? Yeah. Superman Collins would have been the pick here. If the Chiefs um, yeah, do not they go are upset. with Collins, mm -hmm. the Panthers are making this pick. They are getting that left tackle. You're going to have They're two going home happy. Supermen on the same team. That's mm -hmm. un unbelievable. Oh, that would be, it'd be great. Cam doing the Superman, and then you have <laughs> La L. Collins, Superman so, Collins. Same thing. Same if, you same don't, thing. if you don't get why we're calling him Superman Collins, look up Superman's real name. Just, yeah. just throwing it out there. But they're sitting there going, okay, the they could go DJ Humphreys. They could. Yeah. However... DJ Humphreys isn't a left tackle. So that need at I left I mean, you can tackle, shift things around, but there's no guarantees, of course. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I lied. DJ Humphreys is on the left side. I just looked it up. So they could go DJ Humphreys, mm -hmm. but they're not. They're going to say, you know what? 
we, we don't need it. We're going to go wide receiver, go with U, USC, Southern Cales, Aguilar. He's a punt returner, too. Oh, and He's that's going to be good. He's got speed. He yep. can catch. He's a punt returner. And it's nice, too, when uh, – He's got the speed to break away from mm-hmm. people, and Cam Newton being a little mobile, mm-hmm. if he can extend plays out, there's no way that Aguilar won't be open. I mean, that's just that's as simple as it gets. And when we lost uh, Steve Smith on that Panthers offense, there was just nobody to throw to last year. I mean, literally last year's offseason for the Panthers made no sense because every single viable option to throw the ball to was escorted out of the building, essentially saying, all right, we don't need you anymore. Now they're riding the ship. They're getting someone who will be open, guaranteed. You're going to be thrilled with this. And you and you may be sitting there if you're either a Panther fan or you follow the Panthers. And Mark, I'm just gonna I'm gonna speak here. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna defend our pick. You may sit there and go, "Well, Ricky, the Panthers this offseason picked up Ted Ginn Jr., who is a wide receiver, but nothing to turn. be excited wait, about." Wait, wait, Mark, I got this. I got this. They also picked up offensive tackle Michael O'Hare, ex-Baltimore Raven. And you may be sitting there going, well, they got Tengen. Why are they getting another wide receiver who's a return guy? And here's my thought. Tengen ain't the guy you think he is. He's not a great guy. And I'm not saying guy off the field. I'm saying on the football field. He's nothing special. Mm Mm-hmm. You have, a, you have a chance to get a young wide receiver who can do better things. This is my, uh, for the older listeners, this is my Dave Oster coming out, defending the USC guy, defending the Trojans. Well, Dave Oster's just going to say USC, therefore, yeah, number the, one overall. Go Trojans. That's yeah. all he's got to say because he's a Trojan guy. But Wide receiver university. You, you could make, I'm going to play devil's advocate, you could make the argument to take DJ Humphreys here. However, I think wide receiver is a better try. I think you can get offensive tackle. Cam later. Newton needs to throw the ball to somebody. Yeah, and he can. He if he doesn't have his offensive line, at least he's got the mobility to extend that play. And the key word is they need a serviceable guy mm-hmm. on that left side. And DJ Humphreys, I don't know if he's gonna fit. If he'd fit with the Panthers, but moving on, we have. I believe it's our. Uh, this is the oh, Ravens. Oh, no. 26. I'm, I'm two picks off. Here's the Ravens. Who are they taking? So for the Ravens, they're going to go with Jalen Strong. Solid pick. Uh, they need somebody to throw to. Joe Flacco is going to be an excellent weapon for this, or an ex- excellent quarterback for this weapon. Going to throw him right mm-hmm. open. Jalen Strong, not the best, but he's going to do some good things in uh, in Baltimore. Okay. Here's the pick I wanted to get to, 27. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reopen a topic we talked about earlier. Give me just the final kibosh on this discussion. Okay. The odds that the Cowboys try to at least offer for AP here. With if everything plays out like we have it now, mm-hmm. Gruley's gone, Gordon's gone. Give me odds that they at least seriously pursue AP. The odds that they pick up the phone, 100%. The odds that it's a very serious call ta- and they're very willing to make I'm this happen. I'm talking like I'm saying serious 80. as in like it gets far down the line to where mm-hmm. we're getting close to the clock yeah. running out. I'm saying an 80% chance that they're sitting there, they've got their players on the board, and there's like one thing holding it up. I think that, that's what I think. What's I think, the one thing holding it up? I don't know. I can't say for sure. But I, I might be a situation of, I don't know, we want to give you this corner. And you want that corner. And for some reason, we don't want to give you that corner. We want you to have this one. I'm if not sure I'm, exactly what it's going to be. If I'm the Vikings, mm-hmm. off the top, before I open up their player pages, their top two corner, Skandrick and Carr, taking either or. Mm-hmm. I'm happy with either or. Carr is a 28-year-old corner, whereas Skandrick is. So they're both 28. They're both been in the league. The same amount of seasons, eight seasons, I'm fine with either or. Yeah. I just think for some reason, I could see something getting caught up. And the reason why, I think that the Vikings might be a little less willing to deal Adrian Peterson than they appear to be. I think when it actually comes down to it, you're sitting there going, can I really get rid of Adrian Peterson? It's going to be a serious discussion if it happens. Oh, yeah. But it's, I think, it's going to be a long discussion, I think. I think it's going 75% to a lot of percent that it's super serious to where we get close on mm-hmm. 35 that it actually happens. 
I'm yeah. giving it Dumb and Dumber. Mm-hmm. So you're saying there's a chance. Definitely. Hey, but, Cowboys fans are happy about it. But we ended up having the Cowboys go with Marcus Peters. They need a corner. He's the top corner available out of Washington. So just seems like a good fit. 28, the Broncos. They need some help on that line. Hey, your man, uh, Peyton Manning, he's old, all right? Mm-hmm. And he's not Tom Brady playing until, until <laughs> forever, a little, never going to stop. He needs somebody to help keep him on his feet and not let him get hurt again. Andrews Pete has fallen. He's sitting he's there. fallen. Why not go for the offensive uh, yeah. the offensive tackle? So that we have him going offensive tackle. We have at 29, the Colts. They really wanted Pete. He would have fit in, but they'll say, you know what? We'll take TJ Clemmings, another Nothing offensive wrong with that. lineman for him. Then we have the Packers going offensive line as well with Flowers. Mm-hmm. Here's the interesting thing. The Saints at 31. Yeah. So for the who Saints. Who we got? Tell them who we got. We, we got to remember the Saints did not fill the need of wide receiver earlier. So they're sitting there right now going. Or. Or tight end. And who because this guy's a little bit of yeah, both. He's a little bit of column A, a little Devin bit of column Devin Funches. B. He's going to replace Jimmy Graham. Who or you he got could with replace this Kenny Stills. Yeah, but I mean, he's saying, where they fit exactly. Him. And in this situation, uh, with Jimmy Graham saying, I'm a little mm-hmm. bit wide receiver, I'm a little bit tight end, this is perfect because Funch okay. is going to do both. And with this last pick, I have to, we got to talk through what mm-hmm. we had going on here. Originally, we had the Jaguars trading with the Colts because we were like, okay, the Colts are going to look at Pete being off the board a pick before them, say, you know what, we could take Clemmings. But we're going to trade off to Jacksonville. And but not then, the most likely. We, we both kind of agreed that we, probably wouldn't actually happen. After looking at it, we said no. Colts are going to make their pick. They'll take Clemmings because of what they needed. However, the Patriots at 32. They're going to sit there. They could take a wide receiver. They can go with Jalen Strong. Mm-hmm. Or uh, Dorsett. No, Dorsett was the yep. guy. Dorsett, who I thought would be he's mainly fast. just because he's super fast, and I think that Belichick, Belichick would enjoy move. having yeah. that weapon. However, we went with the Patriots doing the ultimate Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft move, trading back. Mm. Jaguars jumping up from, I believe, third 35th pick, 35th, overall. third pick of the second round to sneak back into the first round. Mm-hmm. The Jags will take DJ Humphreys, offensive lineman. What's the trade details? They are, the Jaguars are going to give up their second to the Patriots as well as their fifth, and they're going to get the 32nd out of it. And, not a bad trade. Well, and not only is it not a bad trade, the way I look at it is the Patriots don't really want to make this pick. If they mm-hmm. have to, they will, but they don't want to make this pick. And Jacksonville's going to sit there going, well, you know what? We're going to take an offensive lineman in the – they they address the need of Leonard. Well, not a need. It's just Leonard Williams was the best. He's available. there. That's You're not going to take him? him? Yeah. Well, we need our offensive linemen. We don't want anyone ahead of us, mm-hmm. two picks ahead of us, taking him. We're just going to go and get him. Solid. Just go get him. Yeah, and I mean, why not? It's it's a good pick here. Uh, you need to protect that young quarterback out mm-hmm. there. Make sure you do it. And, and what are you trading up? You're trading up four picks. Yeah, not bad at all. It's kind of like a little bit of like it reminds me last year where the Vikings traded up to get Teddy Bridgewater. Who did they trade with? Oh, that's right, the defending Super Bowl champions at yep. the time. Because you got all you got everything you need. Yeah, we just won a Super Bowl. As long as Tom Brady's help, healthy, they'll be fine. And Here's the last thing that I want to bring up before we wrap this whole mock draft up. Because mm-hmm. I mentioned it during our draft, but it didn't happen. Are the Bills going to try to trade back in in the first round? Do you I don't think, think they'll they actually? Do. do you think Rex Ryan is going to be fine sitting it, just sitting it out, being mm-hmm. a spectator on Thursday night? He'll join the party on Friday, or is he coming Thursday saying? I want back in. I want a seat at this poker table. I think you keep as many picks as you want right now. Or as many picks as you have. Got to keep them all. 
worry about next year because because I don't think you got plenty Se- of needs. The Seahawks aren't trading back in. No, no, they they traded out because they wanted Jimmy Graham. Jimmy They're Graham is staying worth out everything they got. But me with the Bills, and this is only because it's Rex Ryan. There's going to be a Rex Ryan thought up there of, let's see if we can get in, especially late round. If the Cowboys especially sit there and it's like, oh, well, both of the running backs are gone. We could go corner. Rex Ryan may call up Jerry and say, let's get something done. Come on, man. Or have the GM of Buffalo say, hey, let's get a deal done. We want back in on this table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just don't. I personally don't see it happening. Um, I think Rex got to play, got to play it safe right now. Play it kind of quiet. You already, you already did great things with the Lashawn McCoy. Trade. Yeah. So you're you're thrilled with that situation. So you're doing well right now. Just kind of play it smart, play it safe. So that is going to do it though for our mock onside kick mock draft 2.0. If you had anything wrong with this draft, and I know you did, I know you're sitting there going. Well, I don't agree with this. You tell us down below. If you're listening on SoundCloud and YouTube, you go to the comment section down below. You tell us what you don't like or what you do like. You may have liked some of the picks for your team, but if you liked it, didn't like it, let us know. If you're listening on WXAV right now, you go to your Twitter, because I know you have one, and you hit up at most valuable pod, and you tell us what you thought of your team's picks next week. We are going to have kind of a double podcast week for you. We'll have our traditional onside kick Mm -hmm. for Wednesday. But earlier in the week, Sunday, Monday, depending on if you listen on WXAV or SoundCloud YouTube, we are going to have a special mock draft where we have gathered some experts, we're calling them, fans from the individual fan bases to make picks For your team, these are fans just like you making the pick. So it's going to be guys that you you may agree with them, you may not. You got to listen in to see if you do. Make sure you check out. Also, I got to pitch our Patreon page, Mark. Tell them about the Patreon. You can head over to patreon.com slash most valuable podcast. Go check it out. See what different options we have available to you guys. You can... If you want to support us financially, not that you have to, you don't have to at all because everything is still free on SoundCloud and YouTube. But if you're thinking, I like these guys, I want to throw them a little bit of money here, feel free to do that and we will reward you for what you do. So check out those various packages that are available. One of them, for example, you can call into the show. Yeah, you can be on the show. Fill in your opinion. Maybe you want to tell Ricky he's an idiot. I don't know. I would like to do that. Eventually, we got to talk about these schedules that just dropped. Exactly, exactly. So head over to patreon.com slash most valuable podcast. That's going to do it for the Onside Kick, guys. Thank you for listening. Make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and as always, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast.